In the first part of the lab, you will perform step input tests to characterize the behavior of each of the three controllers. So in this video, we're going to talk about how to create the three input-output process models that you will need to complete this part of the lab. Each of the three models will be an integrating model, first order model, or a combination of models. You might also end up including a less common model such as half order, but this would be at the discretion of your instructor. To characterize each controller, you will need to perform a step change to the manipulated variable. In this video, we will do a 10% step change to the heat duty, then record and analyze the response of the process variable, which is temperature. To perform a step change input, First, let the process achieve steady state conditions. You can do this by waiting until the plots show stability or simply by refreshing the page because the default values in this simulation are already at steady state. Next, enter a new value for one of the manipulated variables. Here we will do a 10% increase to the heat duty, bringing it up to 550 kilowatts. Then press update or press the enter key on your keyboard. Allow roughly 900 simulated seconds to pass and be careful not to let the initial time of the step change to go beyond 1000 seconds because the spreadsheet will only include up to 1000 seconds of historical data. I'm going to fast forward the simulation here to reduce our wait time a bit. You may have noticed that some of the input boxes are grayed out, such as the controller tuning parameters and the auto manual button. You will use these inputs in part two of the lab, but for now we can just ignore them. It seems like enough time has passed, so let's pause the simulation here. We can see that the liquid level and column pressure are not yet at steady state. This is okay as the process models are single input, single output, meaning we only need to worry about the temperature and heat duty to build our first process model. Once you feel like you have enough data, press snapshot CSV below the simulation speed slider and a spreadsheet will download to your computer. Here I have plotted the data in Excel and I have created a plot of the step response. Next, we will want to trim the data so that the step change input occurs at t equals zero. Then we will want to convert the process variables to deviation form such that the temperature is zero at t equals zero. Finally, we will perform least squares regression to find the process gain and time constant as well as the corresponding 95% confidence intervals. Least squares regression is beyond the scope of this video, but there are resources on learnchemi.com to help you with this process. Links to those resources will be in the video description as well as in the directions of part one of this lab. Once you have created input output process models for each of the three controllers, you will have completed the first part of this lab.